What is up, everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about market correlations. Market correlations are arguably the most important signal for me when it comes to executing a high probability trade. Now, one thing that is very important that I think you guys must do is watch these videos here. You should watch the video on mean reversions. You should watch the videos on how I set up profiles. You should also watch the gap jump video. And then you should also watch the how I set up my Sierra charts video because this shows you how I find setups. And once you've gone through all four of those, I would recommend coming back to this specific video. Okay. In those videos, like the mean reversion profile and gap jump video, I share with you guys trades or setups that give me edge. Okay. Now, the thing is, we've been in low volatility environments for quite some time now at least for the ES. The ES is just really low volatility and lower volatility makes trades a lot more difficult to deal with, especially if you're somebody who's used to momentum or getting into a trade and getting almost instantaneous momentum. If you've been watching a lot of my videos lately on the channel, and I recommend these three right here, those are all narrated videos, and those are all pretty much done in lower volatility environments. Well, you'll notice in those three specific videos. I'm not sure which one specifically. I believe the trading confidence one. What you'll notice is I'm able to just sit there and handle a trade like not working out immediately and not working out in my favor right away. Why is that? Why do I have trading confidence? Because of the correlated markets. Now, again, in all three of the, in all those videos, the mean reversion, the profile video and the gap video, and this is where this video falls into place because what I'm doing is I'm creating a course for you guys on YouTube for free so you understand what it is that I do because it is a lot. And for those of you who like what I'm showing and sharing, you can sign up on my coffee to join my um, prep membership where you get a prep session where I tell you what I think is going to happen. I show you how I find setups, all that stuff. Also, I've been doing uh, trade narration videos, much like these three videos right here. So in those, if you like those narration style videos, there's a tremendous amount of case studies. Currently there's 15 sessions and over 14 hours of trade narrations uh, where you get to hear me actually verbally talk about the setups, the correlations and how all this stuff comes together and what I'm thinking on the hard right edge, why I'm executed, why I'm getting into a trade, okay? And this correlation video is going to help those who are already doing that program to better further understand why it's so important to prep other markets, to prep markets I don't trade. I don't trade Russell and I rarely trade NQ. However, those markets are so important because these things are interconnected. What you have to understand is, and I see it all the time on the DOMs, and I'm running three DOMs, and you guys can see that in some of the videos I referenced. Um, I'll often see all three markets get a sudden rush of order flow, or maybe one market gets a sudden rush of order flow. However, another market has a iceberg and starts reloading where it would have gotten a sudden rush of order flow thus stopping the move in that specific market. These markets are, in my opinion, arbitrage and they're so interconnected. Um, with algos and computers trading with us, it did make uh, markets more efficient. It made markets a shitload more efficient. Um, as they're, you know, they're, if certain markets start drifting, they start to arbitrage moves and all that. This is just my thinking. However, you do see it a lot in the when you watch correlated markets. And I've been watching correlated markets for some time now. And when I first started trading and learning order flow, and if you remember from my how to read a DOM video, which I'm sure all of you guys remember that, uh, at that time I was trading bonds and I was looking at several DOMs. So I was watching correlations way back then as well. Now I used to not be a firm believer in correlations because I thought it was kind of bullshit and I made a video how I thought correlations were bullshit. I've changed my mind. Um, I don't remember how many months ago. It was a hot minute ago. 
Uh, if you follow me on my Twitter handle, which is at RealFatCat1, and you scroll through the archives, uh, you'll start to see me rant and rave about correlations. Now, the thing about correlations, how they work, how they work for me and how they work so well for me, and is in those other videos, the profile video, the mean reversion video, and the gap video. And those three specific videos, though I share with you certain things I'm looking for to get into a trade, okay? And the thing is, when I see that, and by the way, we're going to see some correlated trade examples where the sole focus is correlation because today we had some amazing correlations. Thus, the universe handed me a lesson to share with you guys. So the thing is, those setups like the gap jump, the profile plays, and leveraging mean reversions, what I want to do is when I see a good setup in the ES, I want to look at Russell and I want to look at NQ because maybe I think there could be a uh, gap jump in the ES. All of a sudden, NQ is also on a critical jack uh, gap jump as well and they both have high EV and they're both pushing into it and then I might look at Russell and Russell might just be chopping and it might be swinging real low and it might bottom tick if you want to know what a bottom or top tick is go to the volume profile video and go into the uh, description because that's the number one asked question I get is like what is a bottom tick what is a top tick go into the um the timestamps and there is, I believe it's at minute 22 something. I explain what that is. So going back to a hypothetical situation, ES might be gap jumping, getting ready to gap jump. Again, you, you need to watch the gap jump video to get an idea of what that is. Otherwise this makes no sense. So it's got a high EV tag. So maybe it's like an EV three with a mid roll or some shit like that that's telling me this might be a good gap. However, there are times where it fails and I might look at NQ and NQ could be, you know, setting up for a gap as well, a high EV. So it's like, okay, both of these markets are gonna potentially hit a, a gap jump. So the fact that both of these markets might be doing this at the same time gives the probability of the ES gap jump working a lot better, okay? it. it it makes the probability of it working better. Whereas if, you know, NQ is doing its own thing and it's not setting up for any type of up move, whether it, whether it's range compression or it's bottom ticking or it's hitting a high EV profile play, that's going to make my ES gap jump not as good. Whereas when the... E NQ is agreeing to some sort of high probability up move. It makes it that better. And then I can look at Russell. And if Russell's chopping a mean, and that's why you need to watch the mean reversion video. If Russell is chopping a mean and it might bottom tick its range, there's a good chance that it might come back up to the center point of its range. And as soon as I see a good clean bottom tick in Russell, ES is on a gap jump edge and Q's on a gap jump edge. At that moment in time, all three markets agree. And at that moment in time, it makes the probability of my trade being a lot better, okay? So, because these markets are interconnected, NQ will drag uh, ES and Russell will also influence those other markets. You can use other markets like the Dow Jones. I've heard good things about that. I am not using it at this point. I would love to add it. However, my screen real estate is pretty full. So let me explain to you how I figured this out, okay? L there was one day where I was reviewing. Yes, I still review my trades. Those of you who've asked me, obviously, I have a really good video on that shit. Probably the best video on this channel. Um, sure, you're watching and learning how I leverage Edge and how I get into good trades and have confidence and sure, you can learn from this. However, this video is more important because this video is going to show you exactly what to do to become the trader you desire. And without doing what this video suggests, it's going to be a lot harder, even as I hand you my edge on a silver platter on this channel for free. Again, if you guys want, 
to support the channel. And that's why I'm making this content for YouTube is those who support the prep membership. Since YouTube is a second job and it's like 8.15 at night, I got to edit this too. So I'll probably be done around midnight just making videos for you guys. If you guys want to support me, join the prep membership if you really like what it is I'm sharing or you can donate as little as $3 um, on the coffee page. So let me explain to you guys how I accidentally stumbled across this. So I have a really good buddy in the trading room uh, in the Discord. Uh, there is a Discord if you'd like to join it. Um, link in the description. Um, his name's Zero to Trader. He kind of has his own thing going on in there. He has his own little corner of the trading room where he's teaching and sharing his own thing. And a lot of what he's doing is looking at correlations. And he's been preaching correlations, preaching correlations to me. Um, shitting correlations down my throat, essentially. Um, and I was a one-trick pony, always just looking at ES. Well, obviously, as volatility dried up, things become a little bit more tricky. And one day I took an ES trade and it had such, like it had such a high EV, high probability of running to a, a specific target. And it fucking failed like halfway there and just absolutely shit itself. And like the entire trade came back. Okay. And I was going and I've, I'll go through, like I've gone through these phases where an entire trade comes back, an entire trade comes back, an entire trade comes back, and it was becoming a real problem. Like I had, like it happened to me before, and then it started happening again. Like it happened to me last year, last summer, and then it started happening again. Fucking trades kept coming back. Trades kept coming back. I'm like, why the fuck did this happen? Like this makes no sense. It, it was such a high probability. It just like rotated on a dime. There was no structure. There was nothing there. there. The price action, no top ticks, no high nodes on a three-year profile, none of that. And again, if you haven't watched all the videos I recommended, this might be confusing. Anyways, so I'm like, what the fuck? So I just pull up Russell. I'm like, let's just look at Russell. Let's see what it was doing around that time. And lo and behold, the reason my ES trade works so good was Russell hit a gap jump, a really big, high probability, super massive gap jump. So that really got my ES trade cooking. However, Russell hit an extremely high note on the three-year profile. In the gap jump, I explained the importance of a three-year profile. And as Russell rotated that three-year high node, it, it made sense. That was called a mid-pivot. And in this profile video, I talk about what mid-pivots are. I may even talk about them in the range video. So it's so important like that you guys watch this shit because as you watch this, this is a free course, guys. Um, it hit this high node and high nodes tend to at least mid pivot once. Not always, but usually there's a good chance that they do. And this is why my ES trade failed because the Russell mid pivoted. I'm like, wait a second. And at that moment, in a trade review, I had epiphany. And this, this epiphany, this moment in time where a trade came back and I decided to review extensively has made my trading substantially better from that day forward to where I don't think I would be performing anywhere near the level I am today. In fact, summer didn't really phase me. And I welcome the low volatility. I finally figured out how to deal with low volatility environments. Fucking finally. I've been trying to crack that code for fucking ever. And it's correlations. It is correlations. And that's why this fucking video is so important in this series. Guys, if you take trading seriously, I would recommend these videos and to really pay attention because this is really good shit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through some trades today and I'm going to start breaking down like I used to in old school videos, trade breakdowns narrated after the fact, what I'm seeing and what I like about the correlations. So prepare for a very awesome review session. Alrighty guys, if you want to watch this full 41 minute uh, trade session video, it's in the membership section 
and it's me narrating on the hard right edge. Otherwise, we're going to just review it after the fact in this video now. And there's also plenty more videos like this that are not officially public on YouTube. So what you see right here is this is Russell. So we're looking at Russell. Notice how it's going up like this, but it's kind of flat. So it's like a rising, a rising wedge. This is what I would call compression. And I got this term from um, Merritt Black from Apteros Nadro. If you're interested in the Apteros Nadro, um, I did a full review on it right there. And then in the description, you can get a super huge deep discount with uh, the Nadro system if you're interested in that. Otherwise, um, I got compression from him. Otherwise, it's a rising wedge. So the market, pr the price action here is compressing into whatever's up here. And what happens to be up here is a gap. Again, you should probably watch the gap video. Now, notice the gap never made it across. It never made it across right here. They attempted once, and then it embedded and then accepted up here. Again, that's a Merit Black thing. More than 50% of the chop right here, 50% or more, is inside the gap. So they fail it, they try it again, they try it again, they try it again. And then we have this huge flush. This is what I call a V flush, and this is gonna be another video for another time. However, as you're hearing me talk about V flushes, once the V flush video comes out, come back to this video or any other video where you hear me talk about V flush and it'll make so much more sense. Now this V flush is very important. They went all the way down here to attempt to find more selling and they failed and it's coming back. So this is almost giving like a battering ram effect. When you have a really hard push out of an area and you're coming back to what's essentially resistance like this or support if it's the other way around, once you have a hard push out like that and then you come back, there's a really good probability they're gonna actually jack it through. So this gap alone right up here has a, a very high EV that it should make it all the way across on Russell. Okay, so Russell is compressing, which is a good thing. And if I'm ever to take a breakout trade at the highs, which again, in the mean reversion tra trading video, I talk about how you know, ideally I don't want to take a breakout at the high of a range or whatever. This is one of those rare circumstances where I want to because of that compression. And also how much that gap was tested. Okay, so now let's go ahead and continue. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is fast forward. Now, what you're looking at is ES and NQ. So what you can't see, and what I'm doing is, remember in this video I said I was gonna, if you watched it, I talked about drawing a red box on areas I don't wanna trade while I've been doing my weekly goal all week. And what, what I chose was pink boxes. So I'm drawing pink boxes on, um, areas I don't want to trade. So I have to wait till we come out of these areas. So I need to make myself disappear real quick. So what, what you can't really see here is there's a three hour range here on ES that's breaking out. So there's a, there's a larger, there's a larger than life range up in this section. Oops. Give me a second. So there's a very large three hour range that got an extreme bottom tick more so, not even a bottom tick, it's a V flush, much like what we saw in Russell, but it's a smaller V flush, which is jacking us all the way through um, this gap. And um, this is a, th uh, a th about a three hour range. And the longer a range goes on, and I talk about it uh, in this video, uh, why, you know, time matters on ranges, because the longer a range goes on, the harder the push will be coming out if a range only goes on for five minutes the breakout's not that great versus something that's been going on for five fucking days it could run the whole next day that's how you can typically find like straight up trend days i'm getting better at those um 
I'm by no means a professional trader or anything. I'm getting substantially better. If those of you who have been around for years, you're seeing this. Um, but anyways, so that's what's going on in, in ES. Now, what's interesting is they V flush the top, but it never pukes the bottom end. And this red area is very important. And if you want to know what that red area is, join the prep session and you'll see why these levels exist. But basically what that is, is a low node section on a composite and a three year and they match. So this is holding very higher. This is holding, not only is it holding high time frame support in that red zone, but it's also a support zone on two different profile time frames. So it makes it that much better that it could hold. And the fact that it V flushed right above me, right up in this section, the fact that it V flushed and then didn't blow out the bottom end and hit this reclaiming section is telling me there could be a push up. And then you also have Russell compressing on a high probability gap. Now you got it. You, you also have kind of a top tick going on in NQ here on the right. However, the last thing NQ did was bottom tick. And that's a pretty good fucking bottom tick. And not only is it bottom ticking, but it's hitting this red area, which is, uh, it's a three-year low node, which you can see right here. And there's kind of a perfect profile here. And that's really a nice low node. And you can see we're chopping this three-year curve right here. And then also you have up here a gap. And this gap is an EV1 AT. And that EV1 AT means almost target. So it almost hit the other edge of that micro gap. Okay. And up here is this purple zone. This is very important. This is a major support and resistance area um, where it's been, it was holding for well over a month. It was holding support. Now, if you, now I have some narration videos uh, from yesterday in the prep membership section. And if you join, you can see me taking a short through that purple section, which was like EV19 or some crazy shit. And you see how I use correlations to take a short through that purple section, which if you want to look at your charts, feel free. But there was a huge puke right there. And it made sense there was a huge puke right there because of that purple bar. So when you're watching my preps and narrations, like I'm sharing with you guys, like I practice what I preach here. And then I show you how it works. So that's what's beautiful about all of this shit. Like, uh, yeah. But anyways, so let's continue to watch and narrate. Um, so let me go ahead and pull up my mouse cursor and let's get this show on the road. And what I'm going to do is kind of fast forward. Okay, so what we can see here is... Um, we're starting to break out right here on, um, ES, which is interesting. Uh, let me actually, let's get the playback speed up to double because the volatility is really low. Now I actually start to get into the ES trade somewhere in this section because of the way Russell is pushing. You can see I get in it right there. So I literally had just got into the trade because for me, this broke this range. And this range up here, you can see, has really tight resistance. And we are flushing the shit out of it. Okay? Now, NQ isn't quite where I want it to be. Ideally, I wish NQ was higher up and already out of the pink box. But I have this red level that pivoted cleanly twice. And it bottom ticked on that low node, which was marked out a long time ago. And that's why these red levels are so critical. Um, so I know that there's a good chance we can see a top tick because the last thing that happened was a bottom tick. So if we have a bottom, if we have a top tick and they don't puke it after the top tick and then they put in a really good bottom tick and they start to rearrange, there's a good chance we're going to see the upside. Now it's not fat, it's not law or anything by that means. It just puts the odds of the trade working in my favor for uh, how could i put it i'm fucking stumbling my words it makes the odds of the trade working a lot better just knowing that little piece of contextual information 
So what you'll see is I'm going to toggle to uh, Russell and and this is what's happening now in the narration videos is I toggle between all the charts and my Dom because traders often ask, what are you looking at? And what I try to do is toggle the screens to exactly where I'm looking at when. It's not always possible because I'm trying to trade at the same time. However, that's what's cool about seeing the narration video series. Again, over 14 hours, 15 sessions in the prep session. And that, by the way, though, that video library is going to continue to grow. So your dollar goes a long way, um, by the way. So as you can see right here, I mean, at this point, the compression is finally breaking. We're blowing out. Now, I am concerned about this area because it is resistance, and I think there might be a chance it could, like, cut back in. Uh, but if it falls, this this high-volume edge on this gap could hold. And by the way, this gap is pitch perfect. I, again, I have a video on gaps. Go fucking watch it. Uh, some of you just don't do that shit. Anyways, there you go. So next, what I want to do is... Um, so, so this is good. This is why I'm getting in... And to the ES as it's breaking out. You got the compression here. So let's keep kind of fast forwarding it. So it is on my break even. But I'm okay. So now you can see all three markets. You can see the Russell. I don't need to disappear because you can still see the compression. You can see how we're breaking up here. Now what I don't like is NQ top ticks right there. So I may or may not start to fight. So I want to make sure that in Q, you can see a top ticking right here. Let me go ahead and um, pause it and let me actually um, draw it so you can see it here. Okay. So you can see right there's a pivot and then that's a top tick. I don't quite like that because that could cause some sort of pulling back. However, Russell is really keeping me in this fucking trade. And, and all the markets, are, like, ES and Russell are agreeing. They don't always agree. However, there, there are these times where all three markets move in the same direction at the same time. And when that happens, the moves are so powerful. And, and ES and NQ are agreeing. And NQ, or ES and Russell are agreeing. Whereas NQ on the right is sort of kind of not quite there. But again, we don't have an uh, official top tick, which means the top of the range. This is more of an intermediate top tick, which could cause some sort of pulling back. And it is near the top of the range, so that could create problems. However, this more major bottom tick in this section is in play. So there's a, a lot more weight on that and the higher time frame red line shit. Okay. Can you tell I'm passionate about what it is that I fucking do for you guys? Show me some love with the coffee. All right, so I go in. So I'm. I want to make sure that NQ doesn't. See, NQ's kind of pivoting that resistance zone, which are now marked out by the pink lines. So I say I'm gonna get flat here because it's just not looking good. So what happened there was I ended up getting a break even in that specific section because now the EV has shifted. Russell is starting to pivot that support, that resistance area. Now, I think the long is still on, on play. However, I know there could be some like drama. And what I want to do is cut the trade and readjust it and get in at a potentially a better price or just let the price action pan out a little bit to give me some more clarity. And watching price action so imperative, I believe at some point there needs to be a video on it. However, price action and the way the price bars over time are doing things is how I manage trades and how I know when to cut and when to get out. So let's continue to watch this. So there's a pullback to the gap edge. 
and it's bouncing, which is good. So uh, because of that, I'm re-engaging. And then also, NQ isn't quite flushing that top tick, which you can probably not see at all. Uh, ES also pulled back. We'll get a better view. So, okay, now that we have a better view of these things, um, what you're seeing is we saw how Russell pulled back to the gap edge. Sometime, and that's one of those gap nuances that I didn't mention in the gap video. Now you're seeing it. This is why case studies are so important, and this is why the coffee membership and seeing narrated videos is so important because there's so many nuances, and until I have that nuance in front of me, I, it, I can't tell you what that is. So what I do like is, you know, we have resistance here. Now they're supporting and they're bouncing off what was resistance to support. This is some pretty elementary shit. However, we're taking it to a whole nother level. Now I just got to be wary of this top tick on NQ. So what is NQ doing here? Well, it's kind of staying up there and it's not just puking and it should be puking harder and it's not. So it's kind of embedding that section. And ES and Russell are both agreeing. So I'm good. As much as I would love NQ to agree with me, sometimes you don't get one of the markets to agree with you and you have to commit. And NQ's not quite agreeing with me other than the bottom tick and the red line. So let's continue to watch this. So that mouse moving is just me narrating. So there's a slip right here. I say this could go sideways on me. This could go sideways. So there NQ is doing his thing. Russell. So I take a bit of a loss there. Um, what Russell's doing is it's over puking. So we take a bit of a loss right there. So Russell failed to hold that gap edge and, you know, it's just, we're not getting what we need. So what I say right now is we need to make sure this, we got to see NQ iron its top tick out. And that's what it just did. So now we're re-engaging it. So honestly, I should have waited and not hit that last trade you saw until... NQ re-engages its top tick. So this dotted line is where the current price is. And now it's starting to retest that top tick. And when I see a top tick get retested, this is one of those nuances. If I see a top tick get retested, then that to me is telling me that top tick is no, no longer viable and there's a good chance they could push through it. And then also we're getting clear pivot off the pink box on um, ES and it's starting to re-engage back up. So now we have an EV shift and now I start to re-engage. Yes, there's a bit of a fight and learning to fight your way into these things is a skill set. And that's the hardest part of trading. The hardest part of trading is learning how to manage and pivot and maneuver because ultimately that's the performance aspect of this. Okay, so at this point, I said not the best entry. I should have got in down here because there's micro slipping. I don't have a video on slipping. Um, slipping is a DOM technique. Getting the push on the gap on Russell. Got a pullback on the range, and I'm just kind of going over what I narrated. So we're down $650 at this point. Uh, which we're going to come out of this up about $1,200. Uh, which you guys will end up seeing. So continuing to watch. Let's fast forward it so... So I'm looking at the highest, I'm looking at a 10 minute chart on NQ right here. 
because higher time frame matters. And what I notice is there's a sort of a range down here. However, there's another range right here and they're engaging this range right here. They pulled back to the red bars. And to me, I think they could flush this, this bigger picture range right there on the left. And I think we can hit the purple section is what I keep saying. I'm gonna get out near the purple section. Even though I'm in the ES because this is such like big support and resistance. Now, clear trend line here on Russell. Um, Russell just had a little bit of drama and it dribbled through. So this trade is taking forever. It's churning on my entry. So there we go. Russell's starting to push. And I, I got to fast forward because there we go. We're busting through that resistance zone. Shit's working out in my favor now. Um, and you're, what you can, what you'll see is NQ is, uh, engaging cause I'm, I, now you see in NQ is engaging the gap right here. Now this gap is gone up to an EV three. So there, it's such a small gap. There's a good chance it can go through. And in the gap video, I talk about the smaller, the gap, the less tests it need, the easier they pop. So again, the gap is the yellow box. <laughs> So obviously ES ain't moving for shit. It's like in my favor of two ticks. But had I, okay, so I get out of the trade right there because I want to re-engage. I'm not sure why I get out right there. Um, oh, we got, I because of the struggle, we get a top, we get a top tick right here on, um, it's struggling a little too much. And then we also, you know, we're starting to create a micro range in this section. Um, I want to see NQ get a bit lower before I re-engage. And also I have a rule that I want to get out if there's any sort of top ticking. There's a kind of a top tick there. It's not the major top tick. However, to me, it feels like the market needs to flush back a little bit at this point. And I could just kind of see it in the order flow. It's something I can't explain in this specific video unless I rewatch the specific order flow in that section. But the way it's struggling and the way the order flow is coming in and just the way these markets are moving, there's just like six cents that I want to cut it and re-engage at this point. I pick up, so I pick up about $300 on that trade. So, um, I want to, and I, I notice it's struggling and when these things tend to struggle. So I just heard what I said in the mic cause I'm listening to my narration right now. So when these things start to struggle like that, oftentimes you can start cash flowing and then getting back in because it'll keep checking your entry where it keeps testing you on your entry and it'll go up a few ticks, test your entry. So since I am down, I want to start bankrolling, which there's a video on that. This whole channel is a course, guys. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm starting to pick up some of that loss, and I'm gonna I'm willing to re-engage it. Uh, so I'm cash flowing uh, because I realize the struggle here. It's not a clean break. So you can see I'm pointing out the top tick on the hard right edge right there, as stated. So let's continue to watch this. So now it's re-engaging that top tick. NQ's re... So all three markets are micro-ranging. And all three are at the top of their micro-range. There's a micro-range up here, and I'm explaining that. We're at the top of that micro-range. We're at the top of this micro-range. We're at the top of this micro-range. In the mean video, I don't want to be on the top of a micro range. Top tick in Q, top tick ES. So both of them put in official top ticks at this point. So I say... So I, I say, I want to wait. There will be a pullback. Now, what we now know that's happening that you didn't, that we didn't see where the context drastically changes. And now we have clear compression 
here and here. We're getting clear compression on all three markets. Whereas when we first were watching the video, ES and NQ were just in ranges. Now we're getting very obvious compression. And now all three markets are compressing uh, roughly at the same time. Sure, they're higher than we would want. However, that compression is good. We just got to double. We got to make sure that these top ticks aren't truly top ticks and they fail. So I keep saying we need to let it breathe. Now they're rechecking those top ticks. So I may be in the I may have re-engaged the trade here. Which unfortunately we didn't see the entry on the DOM. So yeah, we re-engaged the trade. Um so we re-engaged the trade as they re retest the top ticks right here. And that's where we're at. That was the trade. So we're getting in about 11.39 is when we get in. So let's go ahead and go back because there should be a... Um... All right, so I fast forward. It's so hard to see. There's a clock up here at 11.39. That's where we engage. So we re-engage when they are retesting the top ticks. So they're, the top ticks are no longer top ticks when the top tick gets tested again. So therefore, that is confirmation to get into it. We're good to go. Yes, I kept incrementally getting in and higher and higher. However, there's certain little aspects that happen in the uh, trade scenario uh, with these top ticks or one market might top tick and it could pull back. And I don't want to get caught in a bad place and I need to adjust and manage in that moment because I can only tr trade the information that's being given to me at that moment. And if... If in that moment something tells me, get out, I need to get out. Even if it works out in hindsight, you just really never know because there is an element of luck. So if something is saying, get out, get out, sure, I get in, get in higher and higher. And then as we rip up, um, as we start to rip up right here, I, I start to get out because this purple zone is such a big fucking deal. Because it's, it's a, and again, if you want to see that purple zone, it's like an EV19 in the narration video before this, uh, what is today, the third. So the narration video from August 2nd, you'll see me take a short up there, which was really good short. Unfortunately, I didn't hold it as long as I could have. However, it was a massive puke. And the reason we had a massive puke there was because there was a lot going on especially that NQ major support resistance that's been happening all month long. And for me, it's like this could push the market down. And guess what it does in this session? It deflects the fucking market down. Um, and I talk about it in prep, and I continuously talked about that area in prep as well. So if you watch the prep videos, you'll understand why that area is such a big deal and why these even exist on the chart. And there's a lot of tra traders that go into these sessions unprepared, unprepped, and they don't they don't have these older levels, these levels that are all over the place. This is why my charts have so much shit, because we'll hit shit from weeks or months ago that pan out, and it's important to have those areas marked out, so I can take high probability plays. Uh, whereas a lot of traders just look at what's happening today. And they're not looking at what's happened in the past. They're not looking at higher time frames. They're not looking at older areas. They're not looking at high time frame support resistance. They're not looking at correlations or any of that shit. And this is the difference. And this was the last. So these are the series of trades you saw um, at that moment. So I think this video has gone on long enough. Uh, what I'm going to do is do a part two on correlations. And um, we'll see more of this in action. So I hope you guys enjoy that. If you really enjoyed the videos that I've been putting out, you can donate as little as $3 to my coffee. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video.